What's up guys, Justin here with DCGessentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're going to check out Curve Array Pro, which is an add-on designed to help you create copies of objects along complex paths. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I'll link to this add-on in the notes below this video. Um, so you can download this from Blender Market, and I believe there may be a Gumroad page for this one as well, but those links will all be in the notes down below the video. And so basically what this is, is this is a tool designed to help you create arrays along paths and if you go to the blender market page there's a lot of different videos in here showing you how this works but I thought we could kind of talk through some of the basics in this video so um, so basically what this tool does is when you install it and you enable it so when you go into your preferences and enabled it's gonna look like this it's gonna be the curve array pro and magic curve once you enable that then you're gonna have an option over here on the right hand side of the page for Curve Array Pro that you can click on. And so basically what this does is you feed this a selected curve and a selected object or multiple different objects in order to add them as an array along a path. And so note that this is really only gonna work on curve objects. But the way that it works is first off, you would select a curve. So in this case, this is a path that I've created, but we would select it, then we would click on the option for store selected curve. Notice how the name of that curve is now gonna show up on this list. Well next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna give it a selected object to array along the path. And so in this case, we're just gonna select this monkey head and we're gonna click on the option for store selected objects. So the Suzanne is now stored in here. And so in its simplest format, now you can just go down and click on the button for make it. And so when you click on the button for make it, what that's gonna do is that's gonna place copies of this object arrayed along this path. And notice how you can adjust before you make it using the count function, or you can adjust with this menu over here afterwards. And so you can use this to set like a start and end offset. You can use this to slide these along the curve if you decide that you wanna do that. So you can use this in order to adjust the number of copies real quick. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the orientation tools. So let's say I've got another path like this one. And let's go ahead and let's start from the beginning. So we're just gonna take this curve, we're gonna store it, then we're gonna store the street light that I downloaded from Sketchfab. And the link to that model will be in the notes down below. But we're just gonna store this, and then we're just gonna leave these alone and we'll make our adjustments over the menu over here. We're gonna click on the button for make it. And so when we click on the button for make it, notice how what we have in here is we have some different street lights that have been created. And so the first thing you're gonna notice is these are not aligned properly. Right, so they're laying down on the ground. And so what we can do to change that is we wanna set the track axis to something else. In this case, we wanna set the track axis to Z. And so when we set the track axis to Z, this is gonna place this based on the Z axis facing up. And I'm gonna go ahead and set my slide back to zero. But notice how what this is doing is this is currently creating three objects along this path. Well, you can adjust this so that you get more or less of those using the slider right here or by typing a value. So if I wanted 10, I could type in a value of 10. If I wanted five, I could type in a value of five. So note that there are options in here for other ways to fill this. So you can set this by free or by offset. I'm not gonna worry too much about that for right now. Um, the other thing I wanted to know is you can also adjust the X and Y rotation using the functions down below. So notice how we don't really want this, we don't really want to adjust the X, but we can adjust the Y rotation, and that's gonna adjust the direction that these are facing along the path, like this. And so what we can do is you can either set this to have a progressive rotation, like this, or you can also set it to have a random rotation. I could, have, I could set this to have a maximum rotation of like 90 degrees, and then I could set this to have a minimum rotation of like 45 degrees. And if you look at this, that means that this is randomly rotating these objects inside of your model. So um, you can use this to do a lot of different interesting things when you do that. So if you had like different like nuts and bolts or something like that, you could use this to randomize that. So you can also use this to randomize the location. So for example, you could set this to have a minimum and maximum location like this. And so notice how then what that's doing is that's randomizing your X location. So you could actually use this to randomly place some things. Probably wouldn't be my first choice. Um, I probably wanna use a scattering tool, but you do have the ability to do that 
down here. So you can do that. You can also set your scale. So if you didn't want these to all be the same size, you could set these so that they have a random scale, or you could also set them to get progressively bigger using the progressive function. But in this case, you'd probably want some more randomization. You do need to be a little bit careful with this because you can get some like odd distortions in here. So just do be aware of that, but you can use this to randomize different objects along the path as well. Then you can adjust the seed too. When you adjust the seed, that's gonna adjust um, how these are being randomized in here. So you can kind of play around with that until you get the result that you want. So one other thing I do want to note about this, and we'll go ahead and delete these out for a second, is the object placement is being set by the object origin. So notice how right now I have the object origin set down below here. But if I had my object origin somewhere like way up like this, so if I was to move it up here, and then I was to run this, notice how what will happen then is these are going to get placed based on that origin location. Whoops. So that origin location is gonna set where these are being placed along your path. So most of the time, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you place that at the bottom of your object. Um, or if you have something that's supposed to go through a surface, like a bolt or something, you could set it halfway through like this. So another thing to be aware of with this add-on is you can also place multiple objects along a path. So let's say I've got a path like this one right here that just kind of curves around and I may go smooth this out a little bit. Um, but say you've got a curve like this one and you've got these three objects over here, which I'm gonna make sure to apply my rotation and scale. But you could select this curve right here. Then you could select all three of these objects and place them along the path. So we're doing kind of the same thing that we did before, but in this case, we have multiple objects placed in here and you can see that they're all listed on the list. Well then, you can click on the button for make it. And so when you click on the button for make it, notice what that's doing is that's coming in here and that's placing all of these objects on a path. And I'm gonna go ahead and set all my randomizations back to zero real quick. And then in this case, we'll leave our track axis to the X axis. But notice how as I add these, so this is placing these objects along a path. And notice how they're being placed right now in order um, of the way you had the object selected. So you've got your cube, then your cone, then your cylinder. And so one thing I do want to note is when it creates these in here, notice that these are being created as instances of the same object. What that means is that means, for example, if I was to come in here and adjust this cube, so if I was to tab in edit mode, select this, and then make a change, notice how the objects are all changing along with it because they're all instances of the same cube. And so what that means is that means that gives you a lot of control over the objects that are being reused over and over again um, so that you don't have to come in here and um, if you want to make any changes, change them all, you can just change one and the options are going to be reflected across all of those. Note that if that's not happen happening, it's because you set your object cloning type to just usual copy and you want to make sure you're setting it to real instance. All right, so I did want to note that you can also add some randomization in here. So the way that that would work is notice how I have this selected like I did before, but I've got these objects in here. Well, there's an option in here for the um, rand or the object editor. And so when I click on the button for object editor, what that's going to do is that's going to give me a list of the objects that I currently have selected and you can adjust them. So right now, for example, this is showing you the order that these are going to be in. You can toggle these up and down in order to adjust which one's going to come first, second, and third. Or you can also click the drop down over here and you can set this to random group number one. And so when I do that and I click on set, what that's going to do is that's going to create a random group that's going to be created in here. Well, notice how I can adjust how many of these objects are being created. So what that means is that means I'm now getting random percentages in here of what the odds are that something's gonna be created. So now if I was to click on OK in here, click on Make It, notice how I'm getting randomization in here where I wasn't getting that before. So now I've got a, a cone, I've got a cylinder, another cone, and then multiple different cubes in here. So it's kind of randomizing this a little bit rather than just um, rather than just putting these in here uniformly. And so one thing I did want to note is you can use this to place objects along um, things that were originally created as shapes. So this is currently a plane that I've created. 
And so when I created this, um, it's just created in here as regular geometry, right? If I tab into edit mode, I can move the vertices around, things like that. But if I try to store this, it's gonna give me an error. Well, what you can do though, is you can go into your object and you can select it and you can click on convert to curve. And so when you convert that to a curve, like this. Now if I tab into edit mode, notice how this looks like a curve rather than a regular mesh. Well now I can take that and I can store it like this. So I could take that and then I could put my Bonnie model in here and then I could click on make it in order to place copies of Bonnie along that path like this. Um, one other thing to note right now that I missed um, that I didn't talk about earlier is there's a function here for align rotation. So when you click on the option for align rotation, what that's gonna do is that's gonna try to align the rotation of the object along your path. So notice how if I uncheck that, then these are just gonna be set in here all facing the same direction laying down. So usually I do check the option for align rotation. That's also gonna give me the control over what direction they're facing. If I uncheck that, notice how I no longer have control over the direction that those are facing. So usually you are gonna to wanna to check that box for align rotation. All right, so sometimes what you want is you want to create a curve from geometry inside of your model. So let's say for example, I wanted to create an array of this power line falling along the surface. Well, there's an option on the right-hand side of the page for curve from loop. And so what this is gonna allow you to do is it's gonna allow you to create a curve from an edge loop. And so if I click on this, notice what this tells us to do is to select one loop and then a start point at one end. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to tap the one key in edit mode. So I just tabbed into edit mode. I'm gonna click on the one key, but then I can tap control and I can click like this in order to select a path. Well, notice how I currently have this selected right here as my active point. So what that means is that means I now have this selected with an active point selected. And if I click on curve from loop, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take that loop and it's gonna make it into a curve object. So you can see it down at the bottom right here. Well, then you could just store this curve like this. You could select your object like this. And then you could click on the button for make it. And so when you click on the button for make it, what that's gonna do is that's going to create the object along the curve that you just pulled out of here. And so you can adjust. So in this case, I don't want the rotation aligned with my curve. So I'm just gonna uncheck that box right here. And then you could set this with the uh, different rotations if you wanted to, or because they're instances of this object, you could just tab in here and all you have to do is select it. All you have to do is select one copy of this, but you can rotate it. And all of these copies are gonna rotate with it. All right, so if you're interested in this add-on, I will link to it in the notes down below. I'll also link to a couple other videos on this page that are related. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.